on Saturday 26 March 2020, Zimbabweans will head to the polls. This will be the first by-election since the demise of Robert Mugabe. Mugabe ruled the country for 37 years and was ousted in November 2017 by his former vice president, Emerson Munangagwa. We have observed a deliberate uh, securitization of various institutions where you have, for example, retired military personnel moving into the public office. And the result of that has been uh, then advancing uh, policies or measures that have served to disable the opposition. Upon the death of opposition MDC leader, Dr. Morgan Swangirai, in February 2018, Nelson Chamisa was confirmed as acting president of the party. This placed him in the presidential race for 2018. In a closely contested but highly disputed general election held in July 2018, Munangagwa was declared the winner. ZANU-PF gained 50.8% against the MDC alliance's 44.3% of the vote. The legitimacy of the ruling party ZANU-PF is in question because nearly all the elections that have been held in Zimbabwe have been uh, marred by violence, voter intimidation, and even international condemnation by observers. In addition to fierce opposition from the ruling party, the MDC alliance was plagued with long-standing internal leadership disputes. In March 2020, the Supreme Court instructed the MDC to return to its 2014 leadership structure, with Togozani Kupe as substantive vice president. The MDC was further ordered to convene an extraordinary congress that resulted in Togozani Kupe and later Douglas Monzora taking over the party presidency. This move effectively dismissed the Chamisa-led MDC alliance. Access to his office in Harare and party funds were cut off. Elected MDC parliamentary and local government officials were recalled, necessitating by-elections to fill the vacancies. However, March 2020 saw the COVID-19 pandemic disrupting Zimbabwean politics. Vice President Constantino Chiwenga banned all political activities in the country. And good governance in January this year, President Emerson Munangagwa lifted the ban on political activities and declared 26 March 2022 the date for the first by-elections. 28 parliamentary and 105 council seats must be filled. In the same month, ousted MDC leader Nelson Chamisa launched a new political party, the Citizens Coalition for Change. This move rendered the Supreme Court's dismissal of him in 2020 impotent. Rallying started in all earnest. There's a case in one of the CCC rallies in Gokwe where citizens were literally battling with the police. But you'd have expected that the citizens would reconsider the risk that they are taking, but it doesn't seem so. So there's this hunger for an alternative to Zanupia. Despite incidences of violence, and intimidation by the Zimbabwean police force, citizen support for the CCC grew substantially in the main centers of Harare, Gokwe, Kwekwe, and Bulawayo. In 2018, its leader Nelson Chamisa garnered 44.3% 44 of the vote. So that's a significant uh, mandate from the electorate. It emerges greater because I think it, it has the benefit of learning in hindsight from what may have been the failures of the Morgan Changrai led MDC, uh, the internal battles that would lead to the various splits that we have observed over the years. The other players, well, they fulfill the multi-party democracy agenda, but in reality, 
they do not influence the direction of elections in this country. Concerning, though, are allegations by civil society organization Team Pachedu that alterations to voters' credentials, polling stations, and electoral boundaries are made by the Electoral Commission without due processes being followed in line with the Electoral Act. If a voter is not aware that they have been moved, come 26 March, they go to their polling station and they are informed that they cannot vote. That is already uh, leading the votes in an unfair uh, direction. People are voting for human dignity. They are voting for the realization and, re and respect for their political rights.